Yes, hey everybody, Last Outrider here. For the next part of the Sisters in Battle story, The Great Corral. Let's get to it. The skies above Lysios turned a livid purple as the planet's doom drew close. Static-laced Vox Chatter counted down the hours, but the world's inhabitants still stood divided. The pagan nomads of Lysios, despite having received everything from hand-delivered scrolls to hovering cantor skulls demanding their compliance, had not agreed to abide by the imperial exclusion zones. In fact, they had not changed the course of their world caravans by a single degree. Though the nomads believed themselves safe in their limpid, encrusted crawler hulks, Magda Grace had tried to tell them that they were fleeing one enemy merely to deliver themselves into the hands of another. If a single brood of gene stealers cut their way inside one of the colossal engines, every one of its passengers was likely dead. The Lysite nomads would have to disembark and defend their homes with every weapon at their disposal, taking the field against the Tyranids, or else perish, cut to ribbons in the dark. Redeploying some thirty miles ahead of the grinding caterpillar tracks of the Lysites, the Order of the Sacred Rose drove their convent fortresses and grand transport transports through the slime-slicked ruins of Aguapalata Prime. There, they took up position as a mile-wide roadblock, forcing the nomad caravans to come to a halt in a spray of brackish fluids. The most senior battle sisters disembarked from their transports to parley with the outraged caravan elders. After their recent persecution of the world's religious leaders, however, the sororitas did not get far. Negotiations broke down, and the matter had almost come to gunpoint when several of the delegates found that slime that slicked the streets, slowly sucking at their feet. Seaweed grasped at those who strayed close to the ruins all around. Its once green fronds turned sickly white. Strange crustaceans scuttled from the shadows to snip and claw with surprising strength, each bearing the same livid purple carapace as the bioships high above. The sisters made the sign of the aquila as the light sight elders muttered prayers for Cryptus to ward off evil and confer amongst themselves. Many posited the idea that the bioships glistening in the firmament had somehow bestowed an evil sentience upon the native creatures of the planet. It looked as if the flora and fauna of the planet was changing, perverted into deadly and aggressive hybrids that owed as much to the Xenos as they did to the natural world. Even the skies were darkening to an unearthly twilight. Though she could not understand their patois, Canoness Grace saw the suspicion in the nomad elder's posture and changed tact. The Cryptites and the Imperials had a mutual foe, and they needed to work together to defeat it. Her smoldering conviction turned the logic underlying her speech into an inspiring battle plan. 
One by one, the nomad elders agreed to acknowledge the new leader in their midst. Within the hour, the crawler hulks had ground their way through the city until they formed a vast corral of ready-made fortresses. Every roof and battlement was manned by Lysite nomads. Around this wall of monolithic vehicles were stationed the tanks and transports of the Adepta Sororitas, a circle of heraldic black and white and red around the stained gunmetal ring made by the nomad vehicles. Here they would make their stand. The tyranid drop spores could rain down from the skies like a fleshy hail, but so long as the double wall of armored vehicles remained strong, and the area within it, concentric circles as clear of nomad life forms, the defenders could ensure they fought upon a united front. As the black specks of the blighted and bruised skies began to resolve into spore pods that descended in astonishing number, it became frighteningly clear that Grace's plan would be tested to the limit. We're still building up, but next time, the blood rain. Until then! Bye. <laughs>